Hi everyone, this is Veronica. Today we will discuss a topic regarding NEET. As per the title, NEET Suicide, you all must have heard about the girl Anita from Tamil Nadu who committed suicide recently. So what is the controversy regarding NEET we will try to analyze. We will also analyze how justified NEET is as a uniform entrance system in India. So guys, this is our channel Study IQ. If you are preparing for SSC, Bank or UPSC, you can buy our pen drive courses. For additional information, you may log in into our website. So to start with, let's dig into little background of NEET and its current status. See expanding NEET, that is National Eligibility and Entrance Test that is NEET. So it was proposed by Medical Council of India in 2012 to be uniform entrance test to get admissions in medical colleges for MBBS and PDS. These are professional undergraduate programs. However, uh, they took this, uh, this decision and later it was delayed for an e uh, year for some other reasons. Then in 2013, when it was again talked to be implemented, there were many states who staged protest against NEET. These states include Andhra Pradesh, Telugu, uh, uh, sorry, Telangana, uh, that is Hyderabad uh, that time, Tamil Nadu, West uh, Bengal, Gujarat. The reason they put behind their resentment to NEET was difference in syllabus. After all this, Supreme Court gave a decision in 2013. Supreme Court said, need to be invalid, illegal and unconstitutional as a system. Moreover, it also directed the MCI not to interfere in the admission procedures of medical colleges. See, earlier there was an uh, All India exam that was AIPMT that is all India pre-medical test for medical colleges admissions and uh, different states had freedom or you can say they, uh, they had liberty to conduct their own entrance test for MBBS and BDS that is like they can have their own individual admission procedures for the said exams and in case of Tamil Nadu they selected students on the merit of their 12th class percentage. So, NEET was basically to replace AIPMT and state admission procedures and to bring in a uniform entrance test. So, after NEET was declared unconstitutional, in 2014, again PMT and regular procedures of state exam had to be held. However, in 2016, a five-bench uh, judge uh, of Supreme Court restored NEET on 11 April 2016 and they asked MCI to implement the common entrance test and the responsibility to conduct this exam was given to CBSC. Now uh, let's see why NEET is again in the news. You all might have uh, might be watching out news. This girl named Anita recently committed suicide and sent Tamil Nadu in complete shock. You can see this girl in the picture above and below the picture uh, is her mark sheet of class 12th board examination. She belonged to a poor family from a marginalized community and unprivileged class. Her father is mayor a poor laborer. It is said that uh, she was very brilliant student academically her mark sheet is an example of her brilliance. As you can see, she scored a perfect score in mathematics and physics. That is 200 by 200. And if we see the criteria which existed before the introduction of NEET in the state, this girl could have got admission in one of the best medical colleges of the state. In the first line, you can see the statistics of her score. She scored like 1176 out of 1200 in class 12th. According to the state education department evaluation, 
if the earlier system prevailed she could have easily got a seat in like one of the best medical colleges of the state to study medicine but when it was decided by the apex court that counseling to medical college will take place only through need this decision gave shock to students of tamil nadu and various other state boards why to them it came as shock was because like anita when thousands of other students sat to take the neat test they find it extremely difficult and they fail to score a minimum score to pa- take part in counseling through neat anita scored like 76 marks in neat despite being a very meritorious student of tamil nadu state board in one of the interviews i was watching on tv one day uh, i was listening to this girl she said she works very hard in stud- uh, very hard for studies she wants to become a doctor but when she went to take neat entrance test she was uh, unable to solve questions she find altogether a different level of exam than what they used to study in their syllabus and the way they had to approach a, uh, approach their exams was totally different so many students like anita protested against need they said at least the kind of system their state had already what system they were having as an admission procedure for medical colleges it gave opportunity even to the unprivileged class students to reach to the mainstream colleges maybe then they were for medical colleges or engineering colleges and uh, according to one of the survey i was going through government data showed in earlier system which existed in the state even people from rural areas got a chance to enter into professional colleges around 63 of rural uh, 63% of rural people were represented in such kind of system which already existed in the state that is the reason anita and many more students protested and filed a petition in supreme court against the need so after this you all know the verdict of the supreme court they upheld the previous judgment that counseling will take place through need only they said that need is a valid or uh, uh, entrance test to be conducted it shattered dreams of many along with anita she could not bear this and committed suicide she was an intelligent student but maybe weak emotionally a deeper reason somewhere i feel behind a suicide is the government both state government and central government why that we will discuss but one thing before that i am making this lecture again uh, in english language in my earlier uh, video on the same topic when i said this uh, thing that the reason behind her death that we will analyze behind her suicide is response that state government and uh, central government both are responsible many student commented that i am trying to justify suicide when i said the same line see suicide cannot be justified i am not justifying suicide but can't we analyze the reasons behind it see when ram rahim verdict had to be announced state no uh, knew that there could be a problem of law and order they deployed lot of security forces to handle how much it was handled that we all know that is another story however they took some preventive measures similarly in this case when state new decision has come and it is not as per the expectations of the students isn't it the duty of state to counsel these thousands of students who are under pressure always to perform well in exams who are dreaming to take admission in medical colleges the students involved in the protest for the future were in constant mental pressure torture whatever you say in other cases we identify the problem of law and order why can't state in this case predict the kind of mental torture students were going through it was the duty of state to counsel these students because earlier central government uh, promised state government to take a stand for tamil nadu and exempt it for one year from need however central government played a googly in supreme court and said if they exempted one state then other state will protest too other states will demand the same thing too so 
they took a stand against the Tamil Nadu state. In such circumstances, when you are assuring the students of something else, it was state's duty to counsel. You can't put the responsibility on parents because as you know, most of the students on state boards that we will discuss in our subsequent slides also belong to unprivileged class. Then their parents cannot counsel them. In our country, when someone visits a psychiatrist, people label that person as a mental patient. Then how can you teach these people, these illiterate people that they will counsel their children about the mental pressure and mental health? It was state's duty. So I must say it was failure on part of central government and state government. We will discuss more about it in our subsequent slides. So now see how justified need is now look at the figures this year almost 10.5 lakh of students of cbse took 12th class examinations the surprise factor now is that 8.98 lakh students took tamil nadu state board exam for class 12. now if you calculate there are 29 states and almost same proportion of students take state board exams for each state that implies like 10 to 15 times more students than CBSE take state board exams. So now the question is, by bringing NEET, are you targeting the particular section of society that is elite class people? Because NEET syllabus and approach resembles more CBSE style. Why to CBSE students I'm referring as elite that I will explain in next slides. Next point is, if you want to bring a uniform test, uniform entrance test, uh, then uniform standards of education should also exist in our country. Now you tell me, is there a uniform standard of education in our country? We really need to look at these points. And if you consider CBSE as gold standard in education, then tell us, the state board syllabi at, is at par with CBSE, is it? Therefore, we really need to scrutinize this issue if need really qualifies and justifies to be implemented as uniform entrance test. Here, the subtitle I gave, need forced Anita to die. We will examine this now. First point, flawed education policy. What I think is educational policy is not bad or wrong. In fact, it is such a good policy that country is bringing uniform tests for all that all the students in each and every corner now have to undergo some procedure of admission to same procedure of admission to medical colleges. But biggest question is, if you are bringing the uniform test scheme, like I already talked, do we have uniform standards of education also? At least until we have a same standard of education for all, we should not implement uniform tests for the nation. We should not impose them. Further, I would like to justify it by talking uh, this point urban versus rural scenario. Like we already talked, are we targeting just one section of society? Urban students, like see, they are, I mentioned them as CBSE students, try to understand this. In cities, or for that matter, any area or town where CBSE schools are present, the students who take place in these, uh, who take admission in these schools are usually from strong economic background because these schools are owned by private players. They are very expensive. Poor people can't afford to send their wards to such schools. Even the lower medical, uh, middle class families cannot afford. So government schools are the only option left for such families. Yes, there are some central government schools also which are affiliated to CBSC like KVs and Navodhya Vidyalayas, but they have limited uh, seats. So what about other students? They are left to join state government schools which are affiliated to state boards of school education. So there is a lot of difference between approach towards exams in CBSC and state boards. 
pattern of syllabus is different style of question is different you may understand this point from one example let me take your example if you are preparing for ssc or upsc you know the syllabus is different your approach will be different in upsc uh, and if we compare upsc and state pcs or pss uh, pscs the syllabus is different in upsc you have to uh, prepare for one subject and in state pcs you have to in many states you have to prepare for two subjects in state pcs still in prelims uh, subject scores matters but in upsc you only have to prepare for gs so similarly in this case also and uh, what i'm trying to make you understand is that the students who take in cbsc or state board there is different approach different way to study and the question is in the exams way to attempt them is also different and even the syllabus is different so if we are impl implementing neat we should think about these realities is the standard of education same in a rural area school affiliated to state board and cbse school in urban area is the syllabus same is the infrastructure same so we really need to look at these points next is like it is disrupting the federal structures if you have seen my earlier video on marital rape i said that in marital rape what stand government took that it should not be criminalized one of the reason they gave was they have not taken the consent of states properly because there is vast diversity in our country different states have uh, different problems so to implement such a system they need to take the consent of states so that in later stage they don't have to tackle any problem so why double standards here why the central government has not taken in consent taken uh, taken the consent of state in this matter so it is somewhere disrupting the federal structure moreover uh, education is i guess in the current uh, concurrent uh, uh, list so it is a responsibility of both state government and central government now state government has equal fault why they should have revised the syllabus if neat was implemented and it was talked to be implemented back in 2012 it was the duty of the state to keep the syllabus of their state boards at par with cbsc so on the part of state government it is a big failure so both state government and central government are at equal fault they have not done their homework properly before implementing neat now see this line neat may end up creating a pool of medical practitioners from the urban centers who would be reluctant to serve in rural areas so cbsc students are concentrated in big cities so after their studies will they be ready to serve in rural areas why because uh, if neat is according to the cbsc syllabus then cbsc students will be benefited cbsc students are concentrated in urban areas so there will the doctors who will come up in our society after few years they will be from the urban areas will they be ready to serve in rural areas that's what i'm trying to make you understand so it is state's duty to represent both the sections to give equal opportunities to both the sections of the society whether they belong from urban areas or from the rural areas now uh till now we just talked about the problems but at the same time we can't always be re uh, resentful to such changes as i said policy was not bad was not wrong but it has some flaws we have to find a way forward so what i'm already talking about uniform education standards for that we need to improve our teaching skills and standards so if somewhere we are considering cbsc as gold standard then it's duty of state to revise their syllabus according to cbsc they should also try to improve the infrastructure so that our students from the state can compete at national level then it should not matter whether the college is in ranchi or coimbatore one more point i would like to add here what do you think these entrance tests are held for
do you think they are held to check your knowledge and merit no not at all why i will try to explain see what is the minimum qualification to sit in entrance test exam for medical colleges that is you should be 12th pass with a minimum number of percentage that is something like 50 or 55 percent so there comes your merit 50 or 55 percent whatever according to different states so now in case of upsc what is the minimum qualification a graduate with certain minimum percentage of exam so any graduate can sit for upsc exam any graduate can be an is officer any 12th pass student can be a doctor that is the mini mi uh, minimum requirement of qualification so what these entrance tests are held for is to eliminate uh, people to eliminate the candidates they are not to check your knowledge see if there are 100 seats and 1000 applicants you cannot take in all the 1000 people so to eliminate people these entrance tests are held merit decides then later on merit decides that what college you will get what cadre will you get in is that's it all about so what i'm trying to tell you that these entrance tests are held to eliminate so even if the earlier system prevailed what used to be there before need it doesn't matter so what we should focus on should be on the standard of education in medical colleges so when our students pass out from these medical colleges or engineering colleges we should produce the best doctors and engineers that sh that's what should be our motto so now see this last line those like anita with the desire to study and excel deserve the state support in terms of better educational facilities it is somewhere responsibility of the state that we should provide same level of education to the most unprivileged class of society as we are providing in urban areas in the end i feel beyond politics her passing away is a reflection on how distanced our policy makers are from ground what happens now there are people bureaucrats sitting in the center they make policies for the states but i feel it should be in the opposite direction policies should be made from the ground and it should reach the center then then the, the people actually i feel who are sitting on the in the center who make policies are not acquainted with the ground realities realities what are ground realities such people are not well acquainted with this is why rules are framed by thinking of india as an utopia without caring about infirmities on ground now anita has slept forever it is time india should wake up so our policies are nice but their implementation on ground is zero so we should make policies according to our ground realities thank you and yes i was getting lot of queries on my facebook my facebook inbox was flooded with queries for for first que uh, queries you can uh, email me on my email i have given the information my contact information here and i was going uh, through the comments of my earlier video i one suggestion i felt was very nice because in the last, last slide the uh, title is way forward we need to find a solution so one solution i liked some student only suggested this that like in many universities if you see uh, for the academic purpose for the master degrees the process of uh, admission is like 50 percent percentage of your graduation and then 50 percent is on your entrance test if such a system could be added up for the medical colleges it could also help because uh, it can add your 50 percent sorry 50 percent marks of your 12th class boards and 50 percent for your entrance so no area no student can be neglected in this kind of thing so it is a very excellent suggestion and uh, thank you